Okay, it is I to show you how to solve this problem that we started on in class. If you're not in my class, you have to leave. I'm just kidding. Okay, so here is the problem, not part A, part B. The basic idea is that you're pushing this block at some angle against the wall and it stays there and you want to find the minimum force needed to keep it there. I, I went through this solution, so I'm gonna do this fast because I wanna show you the cool part. So here is the solution. So first, I'm starting with this free body diagram. So I have uh, four forces acting on the block. So first, there's the gravitational force pulling down. And then the wall is this pushes on this block to the right with a normal force that's perpendicular to the wall, since it's a vertical wall. Here is that force I'm pushing at with an angle. And then I have a friction force pushing up. And in fact, for extra credit or for extra learning, uh, you could find the maximum friction force to prevent it from sliding and in that case actually if you push too hard this friction force will be pushing down i know it's cool right okay so if i have these four forces and i add them up to zero i get the following equations first in the x direction i have a part of the this force in the x direction and the negative x direction and the normal force so the net force in the x direction is this normal force in minus the component in the x direction. It's negative because it's in the negative direction. And it, if you drew a little line right here, it's the adjacent side here, so you use cosine. So that's that equation right there. In the y direction, I have three forces. I have the friction force pushing up, gravity's pulling down, and then the vertical component of this force, which we'd use sine. So I get friction, plus the component of the force, F sine theta, minus mg equals zero. Now, if you look right here, these two equations, I'm trying to solve for F. I don't know N. I don't know F. I do know theta. I give that. I don't know the friction force. And I don't know theta. I do know mass. I do know chi. But here I have really three equations, and I mean two equations, but there are three unknowns. So I need a third equation, and I get it from this friction equation right here. So we normally model the friction, static friction force as less than or equal to the coefficient of friction, mu s, times the normal force. But since I'm trying to find the minimum force to push it, then friction has to do its maximum part. So this is the maximum friction. So it's just equal to the coefficient times the normal force. So if I take this, put it into this equation, I'll get two equations, two unknowns. I can solve this one for n and put it in the same equation and solve for f, and boom, you get this one right here, this equation, okay? So, and we can check. The top has units of newtons. This has no units, because it's a coefficient. Cosine has no units. Sine has no units. So the whole thing gives me units of newtons. If I push at an angle of zero degrees, cosine of zero, is one, sine of zero is zero. So I get mg over mu s. That's actually a problem we did before and you get the same thing. If I push straight up, there's gonna be no friction. So the, the force I push up is gonna to have to be equal to the weight. And so if you put in uh, theta equals pi over two or 90, then this is zero and that's one and I get mg. So boom, that works. Okay. So I want to use the exact values I had. So here's a mass of 1.5 kilograms, uh, the coefficient of friction of 0.45 and the angle of 35. So let's, what is that force? I'm gonna calculate it. Of course, I'm gonna use Python because Python's awesome. Okay, so let me pull over here, Python. Okay, actually, let me pull this back. Okay, oops, Python, okay. So, I'm going to put in my values here, the things I know, m equals 1.5, uh, mu s equals 0 0.45, g equals 9.8, and theta equals 35 degrees. So I'm gonna write that as times pi divided by 180. This times pi divided by 180 converts it into a radians, and Python assumes you're doing calculation, calculations in radians. Okay, so now I can just plug in my formula, F equals M times G divided by parentheses, this is where students make some mistakes, 
mu s times cosine theta plus sine theta. That's it. Now I'm going to go down here, print min force equals, and this is just the magnitude, um, f newtons. That's it. Run it. I don't know why it's slow. Okay. 15.1.6 newtons. Let's try this. If I change this angle to zero, no, I'm sorry, to, to 90 degrees, and I want to print the force, let's also print the weight. I already said what the answer should be. Let's just check. Print weight equals m times g newtons. And let's see if they give the same thing like I said they would. They give the same thing. Okay. Um, but now I can change this to any, now that I have an equation, I could change this to uh, 70 degrees and rerun it, get a value. I could change it to anything I want. And you will notice that this minimum force changes as you change the angle. It would also change as you change this coefficient. Um, okay, so let's plot. I want to make a plot of minimum force as a function of angle. So here I can calculate the force. Let's just keep changing the angle and plotting it. And you could do this manually. You could do it 10 times for 10 different angles, but I'm gonna do it with a computer because that's how I like to do things. So let's start with a zero angle. And then I'm gonna calculate the force. I'm gonna shift the angle down by one degree, calculate the force, shift the angle down by one degree and so forth. So I need to know how much to shift the angle. So I need this d theta equals one degree, one times pi divided by 180. Now I want to, I need to make a graph too. So let's do that right here. Um, temporary T graph, I like to call it, is an object of type graph. The X title is equal to the angle, I'll say push angle, in degrees. And you can type whatever you want there. And the Y title will be min force in newtons. And then I need to make a curve, F1 equals G curve. And I, I don't have to give it a color, but I always like the color blue, just so you, I can tell the computer that, that I'm in control and I'll do whatever I want and you can't stop me. Okay, so now let's do this problem. So I'm gonna say, instead of while t is less than some value, I'm going to say while theta is less than or equal to 90 degrees, which is 90 times pi divided by 180. Do the following. Step one, calculate the force. Well, there's my force. I can just copy that down here. Step two, plot the force and the angle. F1.plot. On the x-axis, I want the angle. Theta now I need to convert it back to degrees, 180 divided by pi, and then the force, F. Now I need to increase theta. If I don't do that, this will never stop running. So theta equals theta plus d theta. And I think I am done. I think this will run. Let's see if it runs. No. G curved is not a function. It says it right down here. Uh, so I need to do this as G curve. Sorry. Boom. There you go. Look at that. And you'll see here that at zero degrees, it takes some force. And at 90 degrees, it takes the weight. And it actually has lower than the weight right here, around 65, 60. You could just move this around until um, you get it six, you get the minimum weight. And so there is an angle that's the best. Now let's try something else. What if I change this coefficient to something high, 0.8, and run it? Now you really see it. Um, I'm going to use the, less, the least force at around 49.4 degrees. So there's some minimum force that you could get to hold that thing up. And it's not, it's less than the weight because you're using part of friction, but you're also having to push up, so you're losing some friction. So there's a balance point there. And the higher the frictional force is, the, the, the lower this angle can be. But that's how you solve this problem. Um, I think it's really great to do something like this. 
This is not a numerical calculation, really. It's just plotting the function, seeing how the function evolves over time, and you can get these cool things. You could change the mass, change g or whatever, and play around with it and have fun, and that's the most important thing. Have fun, and make a graph, and use Python and physics. The end.